everyone. I hope you're well. Um, today, which is Wednesday, April 29th, we will be looking at continuing flag burning. So on Monday's activity, you read through a couple of the different arguments. And now you're going to be able to explore a little bit more about what you personally think. Should flag burning be a protection under your First Amendment rights? Uh, or is it too disrespectful and should not ever be done? Um, you'll get to decide. And you're going to be writing a speech today. On Monday, we'll actually be giving the speeches. And I will give more instructions, but either you're going to have to record yourself giving your speech or you're going to have to um, meet up on Zoom, which I'm trying to find a good time. I don't think that you may necessarily want to do the 9 to 10 slot that um, we have. Oops, sorry, as the cat in the background there. Uh, but I don't think you want to do the 9 to 10 slot that um, is technically the social studies slot for um, distance learning. So I'm going to take a look. I think the 1 to 2 slot is free. Uh, and maybe around, you know what, even to be safe, 2 o'clock. Uh, so on Monday at 2 o'clock, I'll have a Zoom meeting, and you can just give your speech live if you would so desire. But the giving of the speech is the only item which will be Monday's activity. Uh, you'll be doing all the writing and preparing today. Uh, you do have to submit your speech just once um, to assignments. And honestly, yes, I'm going to be looking to see that it's handed in. I am going to show you the rubric. It's mostly the speech aspect of it. But why you're turning it into assignments is mostly to, one, make sure you're not making it up on the fly. I want you to actually think this out and practice it. Uh, but the other is to make sure that you are not copying from another individual, whether it's on the internet or one of your classmates. Please be aware, this is going into turnitin.com. Uh, that you don't have to do separate from assignments. In fact, all of your activities can be put through Turnitin. Uh, so please be aware of that. I really don't want to have to give you a zero and then force you to do an alternative assignment. Um, just make your lives easy. It's a million times easier to just do the assignment yourself. I know this is an ideal, um, you know, doing this from distance learning. I wish more than anything we could be together. Uh, but I got to warn you, like this activity is actually one we would have done in class. Uh, it just would have all been live. So it's not, even though maybe the way you're presenting is going to be slightly different, this is a valuable activity that we would have done anyway in class. So don't just think of it as busy work. All right, so let me show you the instructions. Okay, so the proposed amendment, Congress shall have the power to prohibit the physical desecration of the flag of the United States. Your task is to write an argumentative speech about whether the U.S. should enact the above amendment. So should there be an amendment to our Constitution that says that flag burning is not protected under your First Amendment rights. Uh, there is no wrong answer here. Uh, it's totally your own opinion. You have materials to pull from, as well as your own personal experiences. This is something that I always find interesting doing. I've learned quite a few uh, times throughout this about students who I had no idea that they had plans to go into the military. And they quite frequently talk about their own experiences and why, um, you know, how they feel about the flag is directly related to those. So really, this is a speech. Yes, you have data or information that you've already should have read to pull from, but you can talk about a lot of things as long as it applies to whether or not the flag should be, uh, you should be allowed to burn the American flag in protest. Um, so. That is the idea. Your speech should be a 90 second argumentative speech on the issue. And roughly that's generally written about a one page double space um, writing. Uh, it should include the following parts. These don't necessarily have to be separate paragraphs, although they certainly can be. You need an introduction. This is a speech, so there should be a hook uh, as far as hooking your audience in, that's not something we usually do in social studies, but for speeches, you do. Um, so you can begin your speech with a unique, interesting, or catchy quote. 
story or fact that grabs their attention, and then state your claim about the issue. Uh, you need some supporting details. Use evidence from the court case's documents to support your claim. Uh, you're creating an argument that will convince others of the merits of your position. And again, if you have some experience, uh, whether you are planning to go into the military, maybe you have relatives, maybe there's some personal connection, don't be afraid to include that into this. Uh, and then finally, a conclusion. Wrap up your speech without being repetitive. End with a new fact, a lesson learned, or a prediction. Other requirements. You must submit your script for your speech. In fact, that is the part that is due on Monday. Uh, you can upload that into assignments. It will be put through turnitin.com. Please, please just be aware of that. I know it sounds silly, but I'm still getting some individuals, and this is throughout all of my classes, who think that I won't notice that they copy and pasted off of another uh, student or even sometimes the internet. I will catch you. Just don't do it. So much easier to and quicker to write it yourself. All right. The rubric is also attached to today's. Um, and again, this is going to be like how I'm going to end up grading this is submitting your speech to turn it in will get you about 10 points. And then uh, I do have to talk with Mr. Tewksbury uh, to see how much we want each to be. If we do still want to keep the 50, that's traditionally what um, how much this is worth, um, which would put it as the same point as our essay. Uh, I will talk and confirm. I'll have a straight answer for you on Monday. But um, you will be, it will be considerably more than the 10 points. I don't know if we'll want to have it or what. Uh, but this does give the basic um, ideas and explanation of information. Um, do you present your ideas clearly? Uh, can I follow your line of reasoning? Does it logically make sense? Um, you've selected good information to support your side. Um, you address the opposing perspectives. Um, that's really what I'm looking for for that section. Organization, does it meet the requirement for what should be included in the presentation? Meaning, is it a minute and a half length in time? Um, does it have an introduction and a conclusion? Um, do you use your time appropriately or does it run too short or too long? I very rarely have people run too long, but I've definitely had 30 second speeches in the past and I have to make people on organization. The eyes and body. Um, does you should be looking at the camera. I'm not asking that you memorize these speeches, but I shouldn't see you there, you know, staring down, reading off a sheet of paper. Um, yes, you can glance down every once in a while, but that's part of that whole speech giving skill. Um, does not use gestures or movements. Um, you can use gestures and movements or natural, I guess, is what it's listed as. You look confident. Um, as far as clothing appropriate, I'm not going to, I mean, obviously <laughs> dress appropriately for a, a Zoom meeting or a video, but I'm not going to grade you if you're in sweats that, you know, you're wearing inappropriate, you know, clothing. That's not something with distance learning when, although not today, but most days I'm not getting out of sweats myself. I'm not going to ask you to either. Your voice. Um, make sure you speak clearly. Don't rush through your speech uh, or too slowly that we can't understand what you're sp saying. Speak loudly enough that your computer is picking up. Um, you can change your tone and pace to maintain interest. Uh, the And I know I do this a lot, but the um and filler words, uh, try to limit, and the ah as I do it again, the filler words, try to limit. I mean, I'm not going to nick you on every single time you use it, but if it becomes very evident that you are frequently using it, that might be when I take a point off. Uh, and then adapt speech for the context and task demonstrating hands of formal English when appropriate. So, you know, you should be using slang words. Um, that sort of thing. Just making sure that it's formal and that you're aware it's for a school project. And again, I'll let you know on Monday exactly how the proportions of points will be the same, but I have a feeling I'm going to convince Mr. Tewksbury that we don't want to count that for 50 points, but maybe like 30 or just a smaller number. I will let you know on Monday for that. Please reach out if you have questions. Um, you know, I'm here to help. And like I said, we'll set up a Zoom meeting on Monday morning. 
Uh, I will also have a Zoom conference on Fridays. I know I haven't had any takers yet. They're not mandatory, but I will continue putting that option for you. Uh, and at that point, I think I'm going to keep it at the 11. Um, although if, because I usually do my freshmen a little bit earlier, uh, but if you find that you have a time that works better for you guys, email me. Fridays are a little bit more open as far as I don't have to follow the specific social studies time. So again, if you have questions, reach out. Thanks. Good luck, guys.